This video is going to show you how to read your tire tread. Not these tires though, I have some real tires as examples and I'm going to draw everything out on the whiteboard so it's real easy to see everything. Even if you have no interest in working on the car yourself, what I'm about to show you will help you identify weird tread wear patterns and at the very least you'll be able to look at a tire and know something's not quite right here and it's time to take it to a mechanic so they can fix this before it becomes an even bigger issue. These are the three common wear areas on tire tread. This piece of wood will represent the road surface. This is underground because we're looking head on. Right now the tread is on the ground and it's got good inflation. It's not overinflated or underinflated and there's no camber yet. Now if this tire was overinflated, pressure would push down on the center and it would kind of bulge at the middle. The middle of the tread is gonna wear down faster than the outer portions. After it's had some time to wear down under high pressure, you may not notice that there's a bulge, but you probably will notice that the center tread grooves are a lot more shallow than the outer tread grooves. If you underinflate the tire, you'll have the opposite happen. The sidewalls of the tire are going to be pushing down on the sides more than the air pressure will be pushing down in the middle. You'll get a lot of wear on the outside, not so much in the middle. And again, that tread may look like it's worn flat, but the tread depth on the outside is going to be a lot more shallow than the tread depth on the inside. Now that's just tire pressure. What happens if we start working with camber? Let's tilt the tire for a camber. With too much camber, this tire is going to wear down on this edge mostly and you'll end up wearing it down like that. With enough camber, this side will wear down to the cords of the tire before this side of the tread even sees any pavement. That camber level is a bit extreme, but it's just to show you what it would look like. It may end up being like this and you still see a lot of wear on one side versus the other. You can also have combinations of problems which may make it a little harder to diagnose, but it's not impossible. Now we already know if we have too much camber and the tire's leaning this way, you're gonna wear out this side real fast. And that's the area of the most wear. But if you also have a lot of tire pressure, it's gonna bring this portion of the tire out a lot too. This is gonna be a tough one to diagnose because most of the tread is in this area where there's accelerated wear and only this area has less wear. This area over here is gonna have less wear, but because the heavy wear area is dispersed over a greater surface area, the difference is gonna be less extreme. On the other hand, let's say we're still working with too much camber in this direction. So this is gonna be our high wear area, but we're also underinflated. So this is gonna be pulled away from the road, and this is gonna be pulled away from the road. So this is just gonna get absolutely chewed up. This is gonna look like a really bad camber problem. You're gonna be excited and go, I know exactly how to fix this. And you're gonna make the adjustment on the car and drive away and you might just forget to check the tire pressure. You should always be checking your tire pressures at least once a month. Don't forget the basics. Another thing you're gonna to wanna to look out for is feathering of the tread. Normal tread blocks are gonna be kind of flat, in line with each other. Feathered treads, on the other hand, kind of have a ramp shape to them and they're gonna make a lot of noise. I drew this with an exaggerated look so you can see it on camera, but on your own tire, clean off a section of tread and then feel it one direction and then the other. One direction is gonna feel just like normal tread because as you pass your finger along these, it kind of just falls into the groove and then bounces back up. But in the other direction, it's almost gonna grip your fingers, stopping your hand from moving. It depends on how extreme the wear is, but you'll be able to feel a difference one way versus the other way. This kind of wear can be caused by worn out suspension components or toe issues. I hope that made understanding your tires just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next Car Simplified video.